Captain Curtis was sharing that uh, someone called him a dork sometime in the past. That was real to him. It affected him for a while. I don't know how long, but for a while. Amen. <clears throat> we heard a confession tonight. Please, please pray for me. I'm lazy. Listed all the blessings. Avoid laziness so you don't miss your blessings. Amen. We heard another confession. The Lord is revealing things to me. It's awkward. It's embarrassing to admit and confess certain things that I need to change in my life. Those are real things in that person's life that needs to be changed. We heard another one. I'll call it a hang-up. I can call it a, a mountain. I can call it a stronghold, whatever it is. She said she prayed and was delivered and found ministry and blessing and power and love. and This was real in her life. This was real. It was confronting, confounding. A spirit was behind it. You know, there's an ugly, evil spirit behind our lives that's present in our lives trying to ruin what God's developing and building in our life. Amen. That's a reality in our lives. Praise God. But, the God. but God delivers us up from them all. He brings blessing, joy, and victory if we'll believe and trust Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be a generic Christian. Be specific enough so the truth is realized. Amen. <laughs> Don't be so specific that you can't stop talking. Amen. Because if we go beyond what the Spirit is saying, we're getting into self. But we need to be specific when we call upon the Lord. Name certain things. Proclaim certain things according to the Word of God, according to the power that God has given us. Amen. We have great benefit in our lives if we'll trust and believe Him. Hallelujah. Good to have each of you here this evening. Praise God for each breathing soul that's here tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's a clue. We're breathing. That means we have capability. We have privilege, honor, and joy. I thank God for his blessings in my life. I started to testify about this a while ago, and I thought, no, I don't need to say this, but the Lord reminded me, so I'm going to say this. And I say it with all humbleness and sincerity. When I was called to preach, I was green with a capital GER. I didn't know hardly anything about the Scripture, about Spirit, about the Lord ministry, hardly anything. And a whole lot didn't change for a few years. I don't have a formal education. I don't have any formal influence. But the Lord has blessed me along the way. And I chose, Brother Dean, I chose to in investigate the Word of God. I chose to study the Word of God. Had influences of various kinds that helped me along the way. And I am who I am by the grace of God with whatever capability you may want to call or claim or uh, uh, judge me by. But I give God praise for any and everything that he's doing in and through me. I'm not interested in any glory by man. I appreciate compliments, and I appreciate that very, very much. Often I'll say, I thank the Lord because he helps me a lot. I give him praise. I honor and glorify him for what he's doing in my life. I don't want to be sedentary. I don't want to be uh, que sera, sera. I don't want to say, oh, well, whatever. I don't want to be that. I want to be exactly what the Lord wants me to be. Do I have flaws? Yeah. Do I confess? Yeah. Am I growing? Yeah. Does God love me? Yeah. Does he forgive me? Yeah. Don't want to keep going? Yeah. Anybody else on the same boat? Amen. Praise God. I thank the Lord for every testimony tonight, every song that's been offered and provided. Uh, I even asked her to pray right in the very service. We prayed the prayer in the first place. Hallelujah. Do we have a God that's great or what? Amen. Be faithful to him. His purpose and plan is ongoing. Don't hinder it. Don't quench it. Don't drag your feet. Uh, you know, if we don't commit something that's bad or wrong or transgression, we won't have to ask the Lord to forgive us. I heard a preacher say one time, if we'll stay pent, we won't have to repent. Makes a lot of sense, don't it? Don't it? First Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. Thank the Lord for the word of God tonight. Praise his precious name for his presence, for the ministry of the Spirit. 
as he's provided throughout this Lord's Day to encourage us, to lift us up. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your kindness and mercy. Thank you so much for the ministry of your spirit to touch our lives today in every way and every facet that we're drawn closer to you, that we acknowledge you and glorify you. We desire to serve you with honor and joy and success in the kingdom of God for your glory and purpose to be accomplished, that many lives are changed and serve you faithfully. Thank you for deliverance, for answered prayer in every way. Help us, Lord, to be a light and a ministry of sorts that we can honor and glorify you. Father, help me to present your word this evening that we hear truth or are convinced by your spirit that we go from this place saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And Father, we give you praise and we thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. A couple of verses I want to read before we get started in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, which are 2 Thessalonians 2. Verses 1 and 2. Paul says, Now we beseech you, that means urge you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. What's that talking about? Rapture. Somebody say rapture. Amen. Gathering together unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, Anybody's mind been shaken lately? A little. It happens. Things knock on our heart's door. We see things. We hear things. and We're shaken a little. But don't be shaken so much that you lose the confidence and the hope that we have. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Anybody want to be gathered up in the sky with him when he, when he comes? Amen. Amen. That's the hope we have. That's the greatest hope that we have in our near future. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Paul says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him. How often, how many times did we hear tonight just tonight, how much the Lord has blessed us, He's helped us, He's encouraged us, He's provided for us, He's strengthened us, He uh, has healed us, and brought all kinds of blessings. How often have we heard that? A lot tonight, throughout the day, and it's common that we hear that because the Lord is good at faithful and blessing. He's good and faithful in providing His promises in our lives and that we experience them. That in everything ye are enriched by Him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Isn't it marvelous that something is confirmed? Another way we can say it, like Brother Mitch says, established. It's sure. It's confirmed. It's written off. It's acknowledged. It says that the Lord, how does it the uh, testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift. There's no reason, plenty of excuses. There's no reason that we should come behind in any spiritual gift. If you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you have the privilege to have a spiritual gift. The scripture says, desire those gifts. Pray and desire those gifts. Maybe the hang up is we don't want enough, meaning we're not showing enough desire for a gift. I don't want that one, Lord. That would require this, this, this. Well, if I do this, then somebody else will compete with me, so I don't want to have that feeling. Forget all of those kind of things. Ask and desire the spiritual gifts. And Paul is addressing the church here and saying they were enriched in all these kind of things, that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody purposefully acknowledging and a mindset of waiting on the Lord. Are you expecting Him? Are you looking for Him? Amen. Don't look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Say yes. Lighten up. Smile. Yes, I'm looking forward to the time of the trumpet. Yes, I'm looking forward to the time that my body's going to change and I'm leaving out of here with Him and all the saints that are believing and are watching and waiting for Him. Hallelujah. 
This message is about the day of Jesus Christ. We call it the rapture. We call it the catching up. It's a time of great jubilation, a great excitement and enthusiasm when the church is going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. So that you come behind and no gift waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Who shall also confirm you? What's the next two or three words? Unto the end. Unto the end. In other words, there's a starting point, and there's a place out there, the end, and some confirmation going on in between. How do we obtain confirmation? We do what's right. It's confirmed by the Lord and it's presented before the Father. That's how it's confirmed. Don't expect it to be confirmed any other way. Well, I've done this. Well, I've done that. I pray so many times. So all those things are good. But unless the Lord can have the confidence and surety of the motivation of our heart, He can't confirm it before the Father. Amen. Confirm to the end. Let me read that again. Uh, Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless. <laughs> Anybody want to get in the pearly gates on your own uh, ability? It's not going to happen. Amen. We need to live a life, be in a place where Jesus Christ can confirm us even to the end by our life, by our behavior, whether we're obeying or not or believing or not or going forward or not, however the case we want to uh, describe it. I'm looking forward to the trumpet. I want to live in a way, in a manner that's pleasing unto God Almighty so that there's no hesitation of this body changing in a moment or twinkling an eye. I want to go when the time is right. I want to go when the trumpet sounds. I want to be in a place, in a position that there's no hesitation on nobody's part concerning me. And my prayer is that for you also. Amen. That we hear this message tonight. That we pay attention to what the Spirit is doing for us throughout this whole day. That we conform to what He's desiring. That we pay attention to His purpose and plan in our hearts and lives. Confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Jude 24 says this. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling... Isn't this marvelous? This is miraculous the way it starts. And to present you faultless. How can that happen? How can the Lord do such a thing? How is it that this can be such a guarantee? It's because we believe that. And we follow what He says. That's how He can confirm our behavior unto the Father. The Father is the judge. He's the Almighty, the Creator. And a lot of other, other wonderful titles. Amen. Uh, keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 1. Flip over to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your presence, your power, and your love. Philippians chapter 1. And verse 6 says this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until there's a beginning and then there's an ending and there's a lot of uh, space in between. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Till the trumpet sounds, till he comes in the air, in the clouds, and the saints are called the church is summoned. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, and we're all heading out of here to be with the Lord forever and ever. Hallelujah. This is a great hope. Somebody smile real big. Praise God, everybody smiling a little bit. Guess what's going to happen when the trumpets sound? Amen. Isn't it interesting how we can express our emotion. Okay, Lord, that's another message. Uh, Philippians chapter 1. I saw read, read verse 6. Now jump down to verse 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense, Till the day of Christ. So here's a few items that we need to be involved in that we make sure that we're promoting and uh, supporting in our life concerning our behavior. Approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense 
till the day of Christ. Do we need to be sincere till that time? Yes. Do we need to approve things that are excellent and right and righteous? Yes. We need to be involved in those things, not hang around with other things that are behaving otherwise. If you want to go when the trumpet sounds, you need to pay attention to what this is saying. All of you, from the least to the ageist, amen. You need to pay attention if you want to go with Jesus when he comes. We need to be involved in the word of God until he comes. Uh, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. What are the fruits of righteousness? Everything about his character, everything about his plan, everything that he's going on and doing in our lives. We need to be involved in that on a regular basis. Or E-L-S-E. I started to say Elsie, but that wouldn't be right. Uh, uh, unless, or else, or else, or else. I'm not trying to make a threat. I'm simply saying what the truth is. Amen. It says, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and of God's praise. Uh, now, Philippians chapter 2. Chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God and the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, there's another key thing. You've heard me say it a lot. I'll probably keep on saying it. In fact, I may say it more than ever. We need to do what God says. We need to obey him. Society and the world don't like the concept. We want to do my, my thing, me, myself, and I. Okay, fine. Suffer the consequences. That's your choice. Does God get angry? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a righteous, just God. The scripture says, My beloved, as ye have always obeyed, continue obeying, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It just tickles the Lord completely, not to death, but completely, that he's working in us, developing in us, growing us, causing us to be more like his uh, his Majesty called son, His Son Jesus Christ. It is tickling Him extensively that we're becoming more like Him, that we withhold the things that we shouldn't be saying, that we proclaim the gospel without fear, that we stand true and faithful regardless, that when we've done all to stand, stand there for. It's tickling the Lord, it's progressing His purpose and plan in our lives, and it's said as here as God, uh, which works in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, how many things? All things. I'm talking about being ready and actually going when the rapture happens, when the trumpet sounds, when Jesus arrives in the clouds in the air, that the saints, the church all over the planet is about to leave. The scripture says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. If you don't like it, if it frustrates you, and whatever else that may happen to you, don't say something that's negative. Don't say anything that goes against the character God's planted in you and developed in you. Amen. Amen. Just don't say anything. Wait till the Spirit convinces you to say what He's wanting you to say, and finally you're convinced and you say that. Amen. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, the day of Christ, the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Turn with me, please, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're getting close to the end of this message. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm glad to be in this service. I'm privileged to be among the saints as we worship and sing and share God's blessings among us tonight. I'm blessed and privileged to have that. There's a very, very popular event that's going on right now. If you're paying attention to it at all, shame on you during this service. I'm not real sure I can name the two that's involved. Don't have a clue it's who's on it, who's promoting it. 
millions and millions and millions is actually promoting, actually promoting this whole deal. I'm glad I'm here tonight. Nothing wrong with watching it, but don't exchange that for this. And that goes with anything else that's going on in your life. Amen. Don't replace what you want with whatever occasion or event that it is in place of the Spirit of God, the ministry of God, the fellowship of the saints, the Word of God, and what we call services. Don't do that. I'm not saying you're going to go to hell just because you do it on occasion. What I am saying is, look what you're building or the lack thereof. Look at the influence that you're making and the wrong direction that it's causing. Amen. I'm not being ugly. I'm just being straightforward. I'm not interested in patting you on the back and offering you a, a lollipop with all flavors in one bite. I'm not interested in doing that. Now, if you're a wee bit of a lad in the Lord, I'll try a little bit to help you along till you grow up, figure out some things, and then we need to start learning. Amen. I remember being disciplined before I started school. I learned a few things before I started school. Once I started school, I figured out a lot of things about straighten up, fly right, obey, serve, be functional, et cetera, et cetera. Another time. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, angel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Praise be to God for the hope that we have, the joy that we have, the expectation, and what we're waiting on to happen in our near future. This world is becoming more cold and more wicked as we speak. We need to have an anchor. We need to have something that we're looking forward to to get us out of this mess. Anybody have something like that? Amen. That's how you respond to the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. How's the scripture go? And there's a song about it too. If these keep silent... The rocks, the stones will cry out. How would you like to be embarrassed for such a thing like that? Not me. I'm going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Honor him and praise him and glorify him for he is righteous, holy, and true. Acts 1 and 11 says this. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? Up into heaven. <laughs> a lot of folks like to look at the stars and whatever else swooshes by and just gazes and gazes. Cool. Northern lights, southern lights, whatever the lights is out there. Why well, should stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, hallelujah, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Jesus is coming back, if you'll believe the scripture. He's coming back to, for a purpose, for a cause, and for a reason. There's something that's in God's plan that he's going to cause in our very near future. We need to be in a position to be prepared and ready and waiting for it. Looking forward to it. Amen. <laughs> There's a lot of things in life that we have to wait on, and we wait on with so thankful that when it's accomplished or finished or whatever the case may be. Amen. There has been a time or two, not every time, but a time or two, uh, not this last time, but the time before when we come back from Zimbabwe. You talking about being worn out. We were worn out. Couldn't hardly walk. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not trying to push or pull. I was serious. I am serious. I'll, still be serious. I'll be serious in the future about it. It was a reality. So glad to land in Dallas, walk out of the, uh, the airport, get into our vehicle. <sighs> back home, familiar, can pull into this quick stop or whatever, anytime I wanted to. Amen. We're looking forward to a great event in our life. It's difficult sometimes. It's strenuous sometimes. It's difficult to uh, 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 bow to obedience, to be humble in obedience. It's difficult. It's challenging because we all have certain things in our life, as we've heard tonight, that we're dealing with that are real. But if I pray for Mitch and he prayed for me, we're going to make it. 
if Tiffany prays for Jane and Jane prays for Tiffany, they're going to make it. Why do we come together? To encourage one another, bless one another, pray for one another, worship together, all these kind of things. So they're prepared and ready when Jesus comes, sound of the trumpet, things are going to change in a few moments' time, and we're gone. That's what the, what's, that's, that's, that's the Greek word that says harpozo. I pronounce that right. That means snatch up and change real quick. It's going to happen. Nobody's going to have time for, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm not, it's gone. It's over with. Won't have that opportunity. The time to be ready is now. The time to be confident is now. Amen. I thought of this verse a while ago as Brother Eddie was ministering. Just come to me again and, and listen to it if you'd like. If not, just cast it out. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promises. Do what he says, follow his word, and we'll find victory. Almost finished. Here's a familiar one, John 14, 2 and 3. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. One of the greatest things in our whole Bible that we're looking forward to, to be excited about, enthusiastic about, be ready. Obey the Lord, serve Him with, in righteousness. Be faithful to Him. Don't just go on feelings. Well, I feel like it tonight. I don't feel like it tomorrow. Oh, I can deny because I feel like it. Don't go on that. <laughs> A lot of the plan of God is based on sacrifice. Oh, don't say that. It's an ugly word. You're blaspheming. It simply means don't do what you or your flesh wants. Do what the Lord says. You think the Lord wanted to do something different besides what He was supposed to do? He prayed about it, but he said, no, not my will, your will, Father. And he completed the calling. He completed his task. One last little bitty passage, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Let's hope and pray, trust God that we're able to be familiar with this when the time comes. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, or therefore, or that which will follow. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. The Bible talks about various crowns. I don't know how many, four, five, six different crowns, maybe more. But this one is talking about a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. You know what we're going to receive when the Lord comes back? New body. New presence with the Lord. New location. Going to receive a crown and a robe and a place to stay. God has so many wonderful, marvelous things prepared and ready for us. We can't even imagine. I have not seen nor ear heard nor has it even entered to our heart what God has prepared for them that love Him. What does love mean? It has sacrifice in it. It has putting away self, follow Him, deny self, etc., Almost finished. Shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his what? Appearing. Loving, desiring, embracing the concept of the Lord coming back. Why stand you here gazing? Too many folks are just gazing through life and not getting anything done. This same Jesus will come back. As he said, he said, I'll return and... and uh, 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 <clears throat> If I go away, I'll come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. At his appearing, Paul is saying here, at his particular departure, physically at life, but there's an appearing coming. There's a trumpet that's going to sound. There's a blessing that's on the way. That love his appearing. Be involved in loving his appearing. Not a heart and a valentine. Whoopee. And the next day you forget, forgot all about it and, and half the chocolates are ruined. I'm talking about devotion. I'm talking about purposeful, meaningful relationship with the Lord. Nothing wrong with chocolate. I like chocolate. 
Nothing wrong with celebrating your love for one another. But what about your love towards God? What about your purposeful effort to be prepared and ready and serve and represent him faithfully till that time? Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Receive the word of God tonight. Let his word dwell richly in you. Let it make a difference. Stir the spirit up in your life. Listen to the spirit when he's trying to stir you up in your life. Be close to the Lord. Have confidence in him. Anyone need prayer?